series when animals attack. Uh, during this series, which is our own encounter version of our church's current series, uh, it's an adult series, it's a kid series called Wildlife. Our version of encounter is called When Animals Attack. A little bit more exciting. We'll be discussing several stories in the Bible about, can anybody guess what we're going to talk about from Bible stories about what? That's one, but what, what are some other, what do we, what's the theme of our, of our Bible series? What kind of Bible stories do you think we're talking about? What do you think, Andrew? About animals, that's right. Who doesn't love animals? If, you, if you're not an animal lover, get out. Just go, go. Okay, we're not really, okay, who's got it? All right, now, who's not an animal lover? We all are. Each week we'll be featuring a special animal friend to show you guys. How fun is that? So be sure to be here every week during the series so you don't miss our special guest belonging to the animal kingdom, all right? And bring a friend along. It's going to be a fun series. We like kicking off our school years with, with fun series in the past. We've done at the movies and those kind of things. This year it's all about animals, and so we're really excited. So our first special guest is of the canine breed. So we're going to have him come up on stage, our friend. His name is Shesh. Um, this is our new high school pastor, Cham. And uh, Cham, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Shesh here. Sweet. Uh, Shesh is actually a Chesapeake Bay Retriever, so he's a little shaggier than most. He's got a little fro going on here. And he is actually 70 pounds at seven months old, so he is still a puppy. In fact, oh. people were trying to uh, pet him earlier today, and they're like, what's wrong with your dog? Because he's like hiding behind us, but he doesn't realize his own strength. So he's got like this whip tail to, like around our coffee table. He'll walk by and you'll be like, hey, sure. He'll start wagging his tail. He'll knock everything down. <laughs> and so uh, cups of like Coke or whatever, it's uh, beware. So but yeah, he's a Chesapeake Bay Retriever. And he actually loves cold water. He retrieves like a beast. And uh, he's probably going to be about 90 to 100 pounds. And uh, the cool thing about it is whenever, because of its hair, uh, whenever he jumps in the water and then he comes out and shakes off, he is almost dry, like he's damp, uh, and, and that's it. So he's a little ADD as well. But Shesh, actually, we decided to call him Shesh, which maybe you were like, okay, what kind of name is Shesh? Why not call him like Billy or Ted or something like that? <laughs> he uh, it's actually it means brown bear in uh, Eskimo. And so when he was like two months old, he had the same size feet, but he was just like, he looked like a little Hershey kiss. Like, he was just a little <laughs> fat, brown thing. So, yeah, it's, uh, he's a really cool dog, laid back, and I got a female that she's a little more intense. But, yep, he's sort of starting to see people now. It's like, hey, what's going on there? <laughs> people. So, There's people here. Yep. So, yeah, awesome. that's a big favorite treatment. So. Well, thank you, Pastor Jeff. Let's give him a round of applause for Awesome. Thank you, Shesh, for being our guest of honor, kicking it off. All right, so every, every week you guys come in here, we'll have a different... Uh, animal during the series, and I love dogs, they're really cool, but we're going to get a little bit more exotic animals in here, too. It's not going to be like dogs and cats and all that. It's going to be a little more interesting. It gets more interesting as we roll along, so make sure you don't miss a single week. We talk to you guys in J High. Very, very important that you guys are here each and every week that you can get here, all right? If you don't, if your parents don't come here, get a ride with somebody else, all right? You met a lot of new friends today. That's what we're all about here, is come and listen to this, listen to the messages every week, and this is a very fun series. To be coming. So hope to see you guys here every week. It's a six-week series. We'll be going through mid-October with it. All right, we're going to jump right into it here. Uh, when animals attack, so make sure you write that at the top of your sheets, guys. When animals attack, our message this week is titled "Made for Each Other." Made for each other, and it's all about those of us who are animal lovers. Raise your hand if you are an animal lover. Jay, hi. Raise your hand if you're an animal lover. Yes, yes. All right, awesome. I come from a family of animal lovers. Both of my parents grew up on farms as kids with lots of animals. Uh, my family had several cats growing up. Now, raise your hand if you're a cat lover. Where's our cat people out there? Raise your hand if you're a cat person. Yes, there's a lot of them in Seattle. I don't know why, but there are a ton of them here. And my older brother is actually the co-owner of a pet food company. Uh, so the Rolfsons love animals. 
Uh, so this is a fun series for me to teach on. I hope it's a fun series for you guys to listen to uh, during the next five weeks. All right, jumping into it. We're going we're gonna to start our school year off. It's, it's great. I, I love September. I love the fall. Ever since I was a little kid, I'm from the Midwest, from Wisconsin, and, and I'm like here, we have a lot of, uh, uh, in Wisconsin, we have a lot of deciduous trees uh, rather than the green conifers. So deciduous trees are the ones that change colors and all the bright reds and oranges and browns uh, during the fall. And it's just gorgeous, especially in Wisconsin. There's nothing like a Wisconsin autumn. Um, I love the cooler temperature. Didn't like having to go back to school. Nobody likes that. But everything else about fall, I just, I just love the autumn. And as a youth pastor now, I, I really, really love fall because that's when a lot of our students come back to church. We haven't seen a lot of our students. Some of you I haven't seen since, since summer camp. So it's awesome to see you guys come back uh, in the fall. So this is awesome and how appropriate. We're kicking off the school year uh, starting with the first book in the Bible. Does anybody know what the first book of the Bible is? Genesis. That's right. So write this verse down now. Remember J. High, if you're, if you're new to J. High, you don't have to write down the whole verse. But if it's on the screen, generally you should write it down. Um, but if it's a verse, just write down the location. You can look it up in a Bible if you have one at home. If you don't, you can Google it, all right? Genesis 2, 4 through 25. We're going to kind of be walking through this passage a little bit different than we usually do at J-Hi. Uh, we're going to kind of tell it like a story. So I'm going to read a few verses, stop, explain stuff. We're going to go through it. So this is, during, this, during the next uh, 20 minutes or so, we're going to go through verses 4 through 25. And here we go. So follow on on the screen. This is the account of the creation of the heavens and the earth. When the Lord God made the heavens and the earth, the earth and the heavens, neither wild plants nor grains were growing on the earth. So it's kind of ugly right away, okay? So this is early on, thousands of years ago, when God created the heavens and the earth. There's nothing there yet. For the Lord God had not yet sent rain to water the earth, and there were not people to cultivate the soil. Instead, springs came up from the ground and watered all the land. So it hadn't rained, it didn't rain back then. The water, the earth kind of just watered itself from underneath. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. All right. Does anybody know what the name of that person was, the first man? You better get this right. That's right. That's my namesake. That's right. The breath of life. So write that down. Number one, the breath of life. What do we see here in these opening uh, verses? We see the breath of life. You see, God formed Adam from the dust of the ground. God could have merely spoken man into existence. Uh, we read earlier in the text that God merely said, let there be light. And the sun, everything was set. There was light. He just spoke it in existence. But for the pinnacle, the top of creation, humans, he, the Bible says he actually formed Adam. He formed him from the dust of the ground and breathed into him the breath of life. God's very breath. Right now, you're listening to the word of Adam Rolfson. When we talk about God's very breath, this is the actual words of God. We also read about this when we read about how the Bible is the perfect word of God. It's his very breath. The Greek word is theonoustos, the word of God. This is the breath of God coming into the first human, Adam. So not only did he form him, rather than just merely speaking him into the earth, he formed him like a, like a masterpiece, a work of art. And then he breathed into him. We don't read about that with any other part of creation. So right away we're seeing that humans are set on a different standard than the rest of God's creation. And this demonstrates God's creativity. Write it down, Jeff, focusing on our first points. So make sure you guys are paying attention here. You might also hear me. Snap you guys? I'm not snapping at you to be rude. I'm not trying to do that. I'm, this, if you hear this, that means this is pay attention time. Write this one down for sure. Focusing, all right? Trying to get your guys' attention. If I feel like you're drifting, you may hear that, all right? All right. So that's the breath of life, point number one. Moving back to our text. It says this, Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he placed the man he had made. The Lord God made all sorts of trees grow up from the ground. Trees that were beautiful and that produced delicious fruit. In the middle of the garden, he placed the tree of life and also the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. These are two different trees. A river flowed from the land of Eden, watering the garden and then dividing into four branches. So one river changes into four different channels. The first branch, called the Pishon, 
flowed around the entire land of Havilah, where gold is found. The gold of that land is exceptionally pure. Aromatic resin and onyx stone are also found there. This is a nice area. The second branch, called the Gihon, flowed around the entire land of Cush. The third branch, called the Tigris, flowed east of the land of Shur. Now, even if you haven't had geography yet, uh, in middle school, in high school, you'll probably take a geography class. You're going to learn something. We still know where the Tigris River is. It's still there. It's found in the modern-day country of Iraq. All right, so this is in the Middle East. The fourth branch is called the Euphrates. Guess what? You can still swim in the Euphrates River today. It's still there. The Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. What do we see here from this passage? Point number two, made to work. Write it down. Number two, made to work. God created mankind for a purpose. He has a plan for man. One of these purposes we read here in the text was to work. Okay? So one of the purposes was not to just sit around and loaf around and be lazy all day. No, God created mankind to work. What does this say to us today, 2,000 years later? Christians or Jesus followers should be hardworking people. We were made to work. We should work hard. And by working hard, we bring glory to God. We also see from this passage that God placed Adam over the creation. And God placed us, 2,000 years later, as stewards over nature. And it is our responsibility as God's people to care for His creation. Now, this isn't to say that Christians should all be radical environmentalists and we should all go and join Greenpeace. That's not what I'm saying here. But as God's people, we should care for his creation. Makes sense, doesn't it? Moving on. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. So the Lord God formed from the ground all the wild animals and all the birds of the sky. Jehai, what is it saying that animals were created for? Who are animals created for? What do we see here? For who? Point out yourself. For humans. Oh. Yeah, it's clearly saying that here. God brought them to the man to see what he would call them, and the man chose a name for each one. So Adam's the one who named a tiger, tiger, lion, lion. Obviously not in English. But we clearly see here that, write down, point number three, animals were made for humans. Animals were made for us. We clearly see that God created humans to reign over the animals. What does this mean? Moving up, that line of thinking, what does that, what does that move to? That means that animals do not share the same intrinsic value as humans. Intrinsic is a big word. It's intrinsic. What does that mean? It means naturally. It comes naturally to us. Animals, when they're born, do not have the same level as you do when you were born. Sorry, PETA fans. Here's a statistic that's interesting. I heard it on one of my favorite news programs. Um, recently, someone took a poll of pet owners. <laughs> and they discovered, when they asked the question, if you had, if you, if you had someone, a guest staying in your home, they were just a visitor, you don't really know them, they're not like a relative or a close friend, but you just had a guest staying in your home, and your house started on fire, and you only had time to go warn and rescue one person, or your pet, these are all pet owners, if you only had time to go warn one of them and get them out of the house, which would you choose? <laughs> this is crazy. 40% of pet owners in America said they'd save their pet over a human being. That's shocking. That is crazy. Four out of ten people would rather save an animal than save a human being. We've gotten to the level in our nation where animals have taken this, this strange thing, and we're, most of us are animal lovers, as we said, but it's gotten almost a crazy level. I mean, some pets... Uh, around the country eat better food than I do. I'm not kidding. I know because my brother's food company is like a sub-premium brand. They eat human, the, the, my brother's company, pet food company, they actually have human-grade food 
for a dog. I'm like, it's a dog. It eats its own poo and vomit. Are you kidding me? This is human grade meat? It's an animal. People are spending five bucks a meal out of it. I, I like to eat less than five bucks a meal. This is crazy. But this is, the, this is the world we live in. This is our culture. It's gotten crazy. Who's ever seen those Humane Society, uh, this really, really sad, sappy Humane Society videos that show like the dog whose eye was gouged out by its previous owner and the kitten who someone broke its arm and it's got a leg cast because somebody purposely broke the little kitten's arm and it's crying, like, help me. And I, I can't watch, I have to turn them. Does everybody turn them? Does anybody actually watch them? It's like, turn it, turn it! I don't want to see the crying kitten with the broken leg. I really don't, okay? All right? Guess what? People give millions of dollars to it. The Humane Society is a good organization. They give millions of dollars to it because of things like that. But the love on we love animals right here. We love animals. It's gotten kind of crazy. Because more people in the United States and our country today are willing to support animals who are abused than human beings who are aborted. In the abortion industry. We've talked, if you're in age grade, we talked last year in our evil series about the abortion industry profiting off the destruction of human life. There's something wrong with that in our society. When more people get more upset when they see a kitten with a broken arm than with a human being who's being aborted. That's messed up. The priorities have gotten shifted. And that's what this message today is all about. You see, guys, animals do not have a soul like human beings do. Now, as I've said, I'm an animal lover. I mean, I won't even go hunting with Pastor Dan and Pastor Brian, my bosses. I won't even go hunting with them. They love doing that. I don't. Um, because I don't want to kill animals, and I don't want to see animals killed. Um, unless it's a rat or something nasty. I mean, I'll kill those. But um, So don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me, because I'm an animal lover. But sorry, guys. Because animals don't have a soul, you won't see your dead pet in heaven. I'm sorry, don't get mad at me, but it's true. It's true. There's, there's no biblical uh, reference point or theological point to say that animals will be in heaven someday. No, there's no, there's no doggy heaven. My four or five cats growing up that died, um, they're buried in the ground in Wisconsin. Well, what happened to them? Nothing, they're gone. Um, they're not in hell suffering. I guess that's something. If there's no doggy heaven, there's no cat hell. So that's a good thing, right? Right? Um, no, they're gone. My cats, they're, they, when they died, they're gone. That's it. Poof. They're gone. They're not existing anymore, anywhere. All right? Um, but as humans, we have an eternal soul that will last forever, either in heaven or in hell. Animals do not have that because they don't have the same intrinsic value as human beings. Don't like that? Take it up with God because he's the one who set that up. All right, moving on. He brought them to the man. So remember, God's bringing the animals to Adam to be like, hey, it's not good that he's alone. He needs a pet. Um, he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And the man chose a name for each one. We already said this before. Tiger, lion, elephant, giraffe. He gave names to all the livestock, all the birds of the sky, and all the wild animals. But still, there was no helper just right for him. So what's God doing here? God's saying, all right, I'll, I'll create these animals for Adam so he's not alone. Eh, that's just not enough. It's not, no, it's not enough. What are we seeing here? We're seeing this. Write it down. Point number four, Jehai. Write it down. Animals couldn't fill the void. Animals couldn't fill the void for Adam. Now, while animals can make great companions, no question about that, there is no real substitution for a close relationship with another human being. Look to your neighbor, Jack. Look to your neighbor and say, "Animals can't do it." Look to each other. Animals, yep. Animals can't do it. Animals can't do it. Huh? Because animals don't share the same intrinsic or natural value as a human being, they cannot take the place of a human or provide the same kind of relationship. Now, I can attest this better than many adults because I'm not married yet, but I will be someday, and I can tell you that this is true. This is true. Uh, because I have a pet. Uh, that's the famous Tristan. There he is. Uh, my pet cat. Cat people out there. Um, now, Tristan is awesome. Um, and I love him. I mean, he's... I tell people he thinks he's more like a dog than a cat. Ever since he was a little kitten when I got him at 10 weeks old, I made sure that I had lots of friends come over. Because 
I'd seen how most cats are, how they don't like anybody but their immediate family, and they hiss and they growl and they Arr! or they go hide and they're all nasty. I'm like, I don't want a cat like that. So when he was still a little and kitten, he liked everybody. So I'd have people come over for movies and we'd pass him around during the movie. And so he likes everyone. Uh, one time I had a maintenance guy come into my apartment and the maintenance guy walked out. I go, he goes, is, you got a cat there? I'm like, oh, sorry, I forgot to tell you. I didn't know you were coming. He goes, no, 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 that was like the nicest cat I've ever seen. He was coming up and purring, purring at my leg and stuff and I rub my leg. Usually they're like hissing at me and scratching me when I go into other apartments and they have cats. Your cat was like the nice cat ever seen. So Tristan's awesome. People love him. Um, I've had multiple people take care of him when I go on vacation stuff and he likes them. And he's like, oh, new owner. Okay, I like you because you feed me. All right, I'll, I'll like you and love you. Um, he doesn't have much loyalty towards me, but that's fine with me. That's how I wanted him to be, you know? He's much more like a dog. He fetches, he chases lasers, and he does a lot. He's a fun cat. He's a fun little guy. Um, he's awesome, and I love him. But I'm still looking forward to meeting my future wife. Uh, don't tell him this. Don't tell Tristan this. But Tristan cannot take my future wife's place. A cat does not measure up to my future wife on my priority list. Uh, if you know someone who thinks a cat or a dog can measure up and replace a spouse, a future husband or wife, uh, get them help. Immediately, all right? There's something very wrong with them, all right? Then we clearly see from the Bible that cats and dogs, pets, cannot take the place of a spouse, of a husband or a wife, or either other close relationships with friends. I'm sorry, I had to take away the picture. I can show you other cute pictures of him, because if you think he's cute at two years old there, you should have seen him when he was a kid. All right, here we go. Um, so the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. So remember, he says the animals aren't good enough. They're not. Animals can't do it. So the Lord God caused him to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord God took out of one of took out one of a man's ribs and closed up the opening. Ow! So God performed surgery on Adam. Ow! Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib. Oh, okay. Well, where are we going here? And he brought her to the man. At last, the man exclaimed, This one is bone from my bone and flesh from my flesh. She will be called woman. Now we know from uh, extreme uh, exegetical research of the text that the term woman, do you, you want to know where the term woman came from? Um, if, if you study this in depth like I have, you know, I went to seminary and everything, I really studied this a lot. Um, basically what Adam said in, in the actual context back then in the Garden of Eden was when God brought this beautiful, perfect woman to him, and he's never seen a woman before, he literally said, Whoa, man! That was a joke. I worked really hard on that. Come on, guys. No, I'm kidding. I, I, I didn't make that joke up. That's a horrible joke from years ago. And I was, you guys can at least give me pity laughs for these jokes, man. I mean, come on. You guys think, whoa, man, whoa, man, like he's a California surfer guy. Whoa, man. Gosh, it's right over our heads here. <laughs> I, was, I, I was joking about the context. That's not actually true. That's not actually where the word came from. All right, she will be called woman because you guys literally thought that was true. I sold that a little too well. All right, I'll have to change that mental note for the 1030. Don't sell it so well. I think I'm serious. All right. All right. Uh, why was she called woman? No, she was called woman because she came from the man's body, like the rib, right? Uh, and just like uh, God fashioned the man out of dust, the woman came from the man's rib and he made this gorgeous woman out of it. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to be his wife, and the two are united into one. Let's explain what marriage is all about. So write this down, Jay High. Our last point today, number five, made for each other. God created humans, not animals, humans to be in relationship with other humans. There is no earthly substitute for a close relationship with another human. Yes, we're supposed to be close to God. God's in heaven or within our hearts. So we're talking earthly, physical things here, right? There's no earthly substitute for a close relationship with another human. Now this passage is referring clearly to the husband and wife relationship, but it also applies to our relationships with other Jesus followers. For Jesus followers or Christians, it is impossible to grow in our faith on our own. We talk about this a lot in J.I., just like Emily was talking about in our Eco Group's promo video. Because God designed us to grow in community with other believers. This is why we want to see... Look up here, J.I. I'm looking all at your faces. This is why we want to see each of you plugged into Eco Groups this fall. And for this entire school year. This is why it's so important. 
God created you to be in community with other humans. Just like Emily said in the video. I didn't tell her to say that. All the, the series we're doing for Eco Group's promos that we're showing you guys, we didn't tell them what to say. We just recorded them. I asked them the question. They answered honestly. Okay? They're being honest. That's what they really believe. You cannot grow on your own. Jehai, if you are in 7th or 8th grade right now, at this age of your life, just come in on Sundays, even if you come every week, and we want to see you guys here each and every Sunday, but it's not enough. I'm not good enough of a preacher just to make you grow on, on your own, just listen to my sermons. You need to be in community with other believers. In Jehai, in our ministry, we do this through e-groups. You need to be plugged into a group. So I can say this with confidence. I've been in youth ministry since 2003. If you are a Jehai student and you are not plugged into a small group like an eco group, I can guarantee you that you are struggling in your faith in Jesus right now. <gasps> How did he know that? Because God created us to be in community with other believers. It's in his word. You need to be growing with other believers. We do this through eco groups. Eco groups are based, are small group based, from five to about 10 students big. If you're a seventh grade boy, you'll be with other seventh grade boys. If you're an eighth grade girl, you'll be with eighth grade girls in a small group, all right? This is how we do it. We do life together. They're a lot of fun, as you heard Emily saying, but more importantly, they are how we grow in our faith. So our eco, our eco groups challenge, this is our response today. And my question to you is, will you commit to attending eco groups this fall? If so, in a minute, we're gonna have you guys come up and Michael's gonna grab a board from the back. He's gonna grab our eco groups board. And we're gonna bring it up on stage and we're gonna set it right there on that TV. And we're gonna have you guys in a minute come forward and we're gonna have you sign your name on the eco groups challenge board. If you're gonna commit, not just only in front of each other, but in front of God, that you are gonna get signed up for eco groups and you are gonna attend this fall. I know some of you guys have football and stuff and it's on Wednesday nights. That's okay, it doesn't go all year. As soon as your season ends at the end of October and early November, you start coming and attending. We still want you to sign up, all right? Our sign-ups for groups are going on right now. Some students have already signed up. Our kickoff event is in a little over a week. It's in 10 days from now. And we're, you, what you're gonna do is on, uh, on that night, on the Eco Group's launch party, you're gonna come with your parents and your parents are gonna meet your Eco Group's leader. You can get to know them. And this is a great way to get plugged in and connected so that you can grow. Remember, you weren't made to do it alone. You can't do it alone. So you guys are gonna give you a couple minutes and you can go up and, and Michael will tell you how to sign it. You just sign your name by the number one. So you guys can make a nice straight line right there. We're gonna give you a couple minutes to do that. officially you signing up for eco groups yet that's a commitment you need to follow through with it and make sure your parents sign you up this afternoon when you get home okay it's really easy just like i said on the video goldcreek.org slash ji so my parents only takes a couple minutes to sign you up you need to get you signed up though all right what is this this is a commitment and it's a serious commitment because you made this not just in front of each other we're going to keep you accountable yeah i saw you sign that why haven't you signed up for eco groups yet we're going to keep this up for the next few weeks people are going to see it that you signed up but you also made a promise before God that you're gonna do it. You need to follow through on that promise. Everybody, close your eyes, bow your heads. 
If you're sitting here today and you're going, well, I don't really know about the C groups thing about taking the next step of my faith, getting connected because I don't really have a faith in Jesus. If you don't remember a time where you said yes to Jesus and gave your life to him, accepted him as your savior, 